Hi, and welcome back to Applied Machine Learning. In the previous lecture, we saw what machine learning was. We looked at different applications of machine learning and looked at why machine learning is an interesting approach to solving practical problems. We also saw that there were three main approaches for uh, how we can build machine learning algorithms. These were called supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. And we saw examples of each of these three approaches. In this lecture, I would like to start our discussion of uh, machine learning and its core algorithms and technical ideas with the first approach of these three, which was supervised learning. So my goal here in this lecture is going to be to explain in more detail what machine learning is and provide the basic uh, language and notation so that we can start uh, defining new, uh, so we can start to learn about specific machine learning algorithms in the next lecture. Now to begin, let's uh, recall from the previous lecture uh, the brief definition that we gave of supervised learning. We saw that supervised learning is a setting in which we are trying to uh, teach a machine to teach a computer uh, to perform certain tasks by giving it a data set of uh, labeled training examples, which, uh, for example, in the case of, a, of an object detection system, these could be annotations of what uh, is seen in a given image. Here we have an, an annotation from a presentation by Tesla in which we had uh, annotation of pedestrians and cars. And in, uh, in addition to this data set, we uh, specify a learning algorithm by which the model will infer what makes a pedestrian a pedestrian, what makes a vehicle a vehicle, and it will accurately predict um, it will accurately predict on new images what is uh, a pedestrian and what is a vehicle. In, in this video, I would like to dive deeper into another example of supervised learning. And I would like to use this example to show you what are the different kinds of uh, components that comprise uh, a learning algorithm, a supervised learning algorithm. The example that I want to use here the, um, is going to be a running example throughout this video uh, and also the, the, a few of the following videos is going to be uh, a medical example uh, predicting diabetes risk. So suppose that we have access to a data set of diabetes patients. Uh, let's say this is recorded in um, this, this data set is coming to us from a hospital and we have the patient's medical records and in the medical records we have all sorts of data including physiological measurements and we have the, the age and the sex of a patient. And in addition to that, we also have access to a diabetes risk score. And we would like to predict the diabetes risk from this data. And more generally, we may also want to understand how the different variables and data in, this, in the medical records are affecting uh, the diabetes risk of these patients. So the first thing I want to highlight are uh, three, three important components of a supervised machine learning problem. As I mentioned earlier, the, the supervised learning approach consists uh, of providing, of providing uh, a data set and a very high level, uh, a, very, a, a relatively short learning algorithm by which uh, the if the machine follows this algorithm, it will be able to extract the knowledge that it needs from the data set in order to perform useful tasks so, such as, uh, such as uh, prediction or perhaps um, other data analysis tasks. And this is again in contrast to a more classical software engineering approach in which we would try to manually specify the behavior of a of um, that the computer should perform via a set of rules or via a set of uh, detailed instructions. And so to make things more concrete, a learning, a supervised learning algorithm uh, takes in a data set and outputs a predictive model. And we are going to see in the rest of this video what a supervised da learning data set would look like, what an algorithm would look like, and what a predictive model will look like. Let's start with the supervised learning data set. In our example of predicting diabetes risk, we are going to use a very common data set in machine learning, which is called the UCI diabetes data set. 
This is, uh, it's called uh, a toy data set because it's, uh, it's relatively small and it's used uh, widely for teaching about machine learning. And specifically in this data set, as I mentioned, it has different physiological measurements. And in particular, the measurement that we are going to be interested in is going to be the body mass index or BMI. Uh, we will have for each patient their body mass index, index, and we are also going to have access to a diabetes risk score, which is uh, a number from zero to 300, which indicates um, how likely a person is to, uh, how, how much at risk a person is for uh, developing diabetes. And our goal here in this, with this data set is going to be to understand the relationship between these two variables. So let's load this data set into, uh, into, uh, into, in, into our notebook here. Uh, we are going to load this data set from the scikit-learn library, which is uh, a widely used uh, machine learning library in Python that we're going to use a lot throughout this lecture. Here at the beginning, I am loading uh, scikit-learn as well as two other very common libraries that we're going to use, uh, which are NumPy and Pandas. And then here I uh, load the data set, which as I mentioned earlier, will have two components, X and Y. And then after applying a few transformations, uh, in the last line, I can visualize this data set. And here I have an example of how it looks like. So this is these are the first five uh, rows from this data set. And as, as you can see, for each patient, which is numbered here uh, by an index, we have access to their BMI and we have access to their diabetes risk score, which is called here the target. We can visualize this data set uh, using a library called uh, matplotlib. We are again going to be using matplotlib in, uh, in pretty much every lecture in this class. Uh, and this is uh, again a widely used library that uh, you should familiarize yourself with. And in this example, we can uh, display this two dimensional data set as a scatter plot. And on the x axis here, I have the BMI. On the y axis, I have the diabetes risk. We loaded only 25, we only loaded the first 25 data points from this data set. And by visualizing it, we can immediately see some structure in this data. Uh, we see that patients with a higher body mass index on the right here tend to have higher diabetes risk, risk scores on average. So already we can see some structure in this data as we visualize it. So once we have a data set, we would like to define an algorithm for this, uh, for this task, for, for the task of predicting diabetes risk. And uh, the first part towards defining a supervised learning algorithm is going to be as to assume some something uh, about the relationship between body mass index and diabetes risk. We're going to start with, by making the assumption that BMI is, uh, I'm sorry, that risk is a linear function of BMI. In other words, for some unknown set of uh, numbers, we have this linear relationship between BMI, which is Y, and uh, between the target, uh, uh, which is the risk here, which is Y, and the BMI X. So this is just a linear uh, equation. This is just a simple uh, line with, uh, with a slope and an intercept. And we will start by making the assumption that there is some line that explains the relationship between the uh, between diabetes, between BMI and diabetes risk. So some technical uh, definitions here, the theta one uh, and theta zero, the slope and the intercept, we're going to be referring to these as the parameters of this equation. And X is going to be the uh, input or the dependent variable. And Y is going to be the target or the independent variable here. So let's look at a few uh, examples of what this means. Here I have just uh, I have just defined a list of different values of theta, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 0. And here I'm using matplotlib to plot 
uh, align with these different parameters. So here, uh, these are just different lines that are defined by the slope and the intercept that are on this list. So again, the assumption here is that we are assuming that the relationship between BMI and risk is and diabetes risk is given by some kind of line. Now, assuming that we have this relationship between the between x and y, the goal of a supervised learning algorithm is to learn the parameters theta in a way that is consistent with the data that we have. So we are going to see later on many ways in which we can learn these parameters, but to uh, just to give uh, this uh, one example, I'm going to uh, use uh, an algorithm from the scikit-learn library, which and I'm going to use this algorithm as a black box to obtain a set of parameters for the model. So here I am importing this algorithm, which is called linear regression. So as you can imagine, this is an algorithm that behind the scenes, it essentially fits the best line to the data that we have. Um, using uh, th this algorithm comes from the scikit-learn linear models library. And here I can use, I, in this line, I can fit this algorithm to the 25 point data set that we, uh, that we just saw. And then I can generate predictions on the same data set using the, uh, the model that we have fit. And here I can obtain the coefficients from this model. And it says that uh, this algorithm that we have, uh, this black box algorithm that we have imported is saying that the ideal slope for this data set is 37, while the intercept is minus 800. So I will come back in a second to this example, but essentially we have fixed uh, parameters of two, we, we have fixed a set of values and we have given a set of values to parameters theta one and theta zero, and we're going, we're going to call these theta one star and theta zero star. And by fixing these parameters, we define what I was referring to as the predictive model F star. So the predictive model now is only a function of uh, X and it outputs an estimate of the target Y. Let's visualize the predictive model that was given to us by the scikit-learn model, by the scikit-learn algorithm, uh, and whose uh, slope and intercept we just printed out. So here I am, uh, I am visualizing in black the line that has the slope and the intercept that we just saw on the previous screen. And as you can see here, it does fit this linear trend that we seem to observe in the data. Now, it doesn't fit every example perfectly. Uh, in fact, it doesn't fit most examples very well, um, but it does capture the trend. And intuitively, if we were to guess, given the data, what is the diabetes risk in this region? Well, we would probably guess something around 200 uh, as opposed to say something around 100, which would be here. And so this model does provide us some uh, intuitively uh, valid estimate of diabetes risk. Now, since we have a predictive model, we can start to use this predictive model to make predictions about the data. For example, if we have a new data point, a new patient X prime for which we know the BMI, then we can plug this X prime into our predictive model with whose parameters, whose slope and intercept are known and this will give us an output Y prime, which is going to be our estimate of diabetes risk for this new patient. Let's look at how this will look uh, on the data set that we have here. So first we can collect a few more data points. Uh, recall that we only use the first 25 data points from this data set, and now we can just collect three more. And uh, here they are. These are, these are the, the data points that I'm loading here. And I have visualized these points as, uh, I have visualized them in red on the scatter plot that we saw earlier. So this is the same scatter plot as we had before with new patients shown in red. And now we can use our linear model to estimate the diabetes risk for, the, for these patients. Here in black, we have our 
uh, we have the, the the line that we have learned and these uh, the red dots are the, the BMI values for the new patients and the red crosses show us the predictions that our model provides for these patients. Now you can see here on the left that with uh, with this patient we are almost spot on and we're almost we're able to almost exactly predict uh, their BMI. Here we are this is almost correct. With these two examples we are somewhat overestimating their BMI. That is because this line is only an approximation to the true uh, to the true relationship between BMI and uh, and um, and diabetes risk, and also we may just not be able to uh, learn this relationship perfectly because there is inherently some randomness here. Uh, even if we uh, even if we knew the even even if we had a lot of data and we knew the patient's BMI, we may it may not be possible to directly predict their uh, diabetes risk um, because there's inherently some because there are inherently uh, 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 other factors that uh, are in play here and which may appear as noise in this data. So the red crosses here are the predictions for these patients. Notice that this is just the value on the line for this red dot that we saw. And so there is some risk here, but generally we are in in the right ballpark. So, as we saw here, we were able to use a simple uh, machine learning algorithm, a simple supervised learning algorithm to that, that we were we used this algorithm combined with a simple data set, the data set of diabetes patients, in order to learn a simple model, a simple linear model that was still useful to predict uh, machine learning risk, uh, to predict diabetes risk for these new patients. And more generally, the supervising the supervised learning approach is uh, very useful because it can provide us uh, with a powerful set of tools for making predictions on new unseen data. It works here in a very simple example, but this approach can be very complex and it can produce really really good results. Really, it can produce really powerful models. Uh, in much more complicated scenarios such as self-driving cars or much more complicated medical scenarios. And also we can use this model to uh, to answer more general questions about the data, for example about the structure of the relationship between the different variables. For example in our in our diabetes uh, toy example we were able to, our, our, our model essentially told us that it confirmed our intuition that diabetes risk is increasing as a function of BMI. And so these kinds of relationships about variables in the data is another, uh, is, is, is another um, set of, uh, is another type of analysis that we can do using supervised learning. And again, as I mentioned, supervised learning was an example uh, that we that we saw in the context of diabetes, of cell driving cars, but this is a widely used approach which is very powerful and has applications in many other domains, including um, machine translations, for example. Uh, so here we would give the computer many pairs of examples of different of the same sentence in different languages, and uh, many other applications, both in the medical domain, autonomous vehicles, um, industrial applications, uh, speech recognition, and many many others. So hopefully this analysis. Has been has been useful to you, and you were able to gain an intuition about what a supervised learning algorithm might look like, and uh, you gain some in initial intuitions. In the next set of uh, videos, we are going to dive deeper into each component of the of the supervised learning problem that we saw, which is the data set, uh, the algorithm, the predictive model, and we're going to. Uh, define these a little bit more precisely in using mathematical notation and in subsequent lectures we are going to see many examples of uh, supervised machine learning algorithms and how they work.